Okay, two minutes. That's enough. Well, uh, everyone, I'd like to um, uh, welcome Professor Volker Wolfmeier from the University of Hohenheim in Stuttgart, Germany. Uh, uh, Volker is on our RAL advisory uh, panel, and he's been here the past uh, several days. We had our panel review yesterday. So let me just go through his bio. Um, Professor Wolfmeier is a German physicist, uh, meteorologist, climate and earth system researcher, university professor, and a member of the Heidel Heidelberg Academy of Sciences in Germany. He received his doctorate in 1995 from the University of Hamburg and the Max Planck Institute for Meteorology in the Department of Geosciences with a thesis titled Dial Measurements of Vertical Water Vapor Distributions. And under a prestigious German fellowship, he then worked as a postdoc researcher and leader of a joint NOAA NCAR LIDAR research team in Boulder, Colorado from 1996 to 1998. And then as a scientist at NCAR from 1998 to 2000, uh, this isn't in the bio, but I know he tries to make it back um, every year and he, to work with um, EOL and other other people from NCAR. Um, and that continued through the pandemic, and it's starting up again this year. He'll be visiting uh, late August and into September. So back to the bio. Since February 2001, Volker has been a university professor and the managing director of the Institute for Physics and Meteorology and chair of physics and meteorology at the University of Hohenheim, and that's in Stuttgart. He leads research on observations modeling the atmospheric boundary layer and land surface interaction with research on things like optimizing WARF and the NOAMP, high resolution weather forecasts, impact studies for data simulation and regional climate simulations i.e. the latest uh, regional climate projections for Europe was part of a project that he was working on um, uh, and led for the World Climate Research Program. And in recent years, he and his team have been expanding the Land Atmosphere Feedback Observatory um, that he'll be talking about. And since 2020, Volker is a member of the Global Land Atmosphere System Study, that's GLASS, that's the land modeling uh, he's a member of the GLASS panel, and that's the, the Land and Land Atmosphere Interaction Working Group in the Global Energy and Water Exchanges, GWEX, which is a core project under the WCRP. Anyway, Volker, welcome, and um, we look forward to hearing what you have to say. So about 45 minutes or so, and uh, to allow a few some time for questions, and uh, let's proceed. Thank you. Oh, uh... Please, everyone, mute unless you have a question later. Good afternoon. Can you hear me? Good? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, thanks a lot for the detailed introduction, Mike, and for the invitation to give a presentation. It's wonderful to be back in Boulder for a while, which includes this time the full extreme weather experience, which unfortunately has also the consequence that we're now sitting at the home office. So thanks for joining. I will give a presentation concerning new projects for improving the understanding of land atmosphere feedback in a recent application. Ladies and gentlemen, um, the land and the atmosphere are a strongly coupled system. The variables in the compartment soil, land cover, and atmosphere are connected by a multitude of processes, exchanging radiation, momentum, heat, and water. Consequently, all these variables are co-evolving all the time and it's not possible to understand their evolution independent from each other. Therefore, at any time and any location of our planet, for instance, the two meter temperature is a result of these feedback processes. This diagram gives you an overview of these feedback processes. Solid and dashed lines represent uh, positive and negative feedbacks between variables. And the central sh box shows these interactions. If you consider here, the soil, the, um, the land cover, and the atmosphere is homogeneous. In this case, we speak from about uh, local feedback. You can see this is already quite complex. However, this, these processes can also be influenced by the environment and by the heterogeneity of the environment. And in this case, we speak about non-local feedback. Let us take a look at some examples. For instance, when there's an increase in soil moisture, this increases usually the evapotranspiration ET. If ET is increasing, uh, this is uh, reducing Q. So the, here we have already a self-constraining feedback cycle. 
when you move on, uh, the increase of ET increases um, uh, mixing ratio in the atmosphere. This leads, leads to an increase of relative humidity. This can um, increase the likelihood of the cloud development. This increases the entrainment flux, which reduces the soil moisture. So you find, you find here another feedback cycle. In order to understand these processes, all these variables have to be uh, observed simultaneously or models. And also we need to uh, detect and to observe the vertical structure of temperature, moisture, and different layers, like the blending height, the roughness layer, the canopy depth, which is shown here for the daytime conditions. Consequently, lead atmosphere feedback is important for the amplification of extreme events, for ecosystem functioning, agriculture, urban effects, the response to climate change, and also for the understanding and application of bioengineering approaches. I will come to this point later. It determines the regional climate model performance, the numerical weather prediction model skill. So in order to get an understanding of all these variables, when these are observed or modeled, there are a couple of feedback metrics have been developed. Now I will show you some examples later on. And in order to um, the characterize or present, uh, represent these exchange, exchange processes as best as possible, in, uh, we need also to improve the corresponding parameterizations. So overall, it is crucial that we have synergetic 3D observations and models of the land atmosphere system covering all these compartments. So how do state-of-the-art models represent land atmosphere feedback? Let me show you an example by my colleague Kirsten Varasagi in a recent publication. You can see results for the land atmosphere model WARF NOAA MP operated without and with coupling to the crop model G cross for wheat. The two-legged coupling index is shown here, which is a very convenient variable because it dec describes how sensitive is the likelihood of cloud formation to changes in the land cover and the soil moisture. No? Here you see that this contains the standard deviation of the soil moisture and the derivative of ET with respect to the soil moisture and the derivative of CAPE, no? which you can choose, of course, with respect to evapotranspiration. The results demonstrate a strong increase of the coupling strength with the G cross version. Obviously, current land atmosphere system models seem to underestimate the sensitivity of cloud formation with respect to land surface properties. This suggests the potential of improvements of Earth system simulations on all spatial and temporal scales. However, the detailed process chain leading to these changes remains obscure. This requires an understanding of land atmosphere feedback on the kilometer scale. In my presentation, I would like to show you two new, two new projects which are designed to contribute to the understanding of uh, land atmosphere feedback and one application which is called the cloud and precipitation reactor, which I'll explain later. The first project we designed to uh, contribute to the understanding of land atmosphere feedback is the GVEX Land Atmosphere Feedback Observatory, or in short, GLAFO. Here you can see on the left-hand side a sketch you know, of the observations you would like to put together. And as I pointed out, you know, these have to contain sensors and networks in the soil, which are, of course, well known, edicovariance stations you know, to measure the energy balance and energy balance closure, and as well uh, instruments that are capable to resolve structures and atmospheric variables in the surface layer and the, in the boundary layer. I don't want to go too in detail through all these different instrument, instruments. I just would like to highlight that we have now UAVs you know, to, uh, to um, map out uh, variables in the boundary layer and to observe the land surface. We have uh, new fiber optical um, distributed systems, which are able actually not only in the vertical, but also in the horizontal to measure temperature and wind with very high resolution. This is very exciting. We also consider isotope sensors for partitioning evapotranspiration. 
And then we have a suite of uh, remote sensing systems which are capable to measure wind profiles and the turbulence profiles of wind, moisture, and temperature simultaneously, which is absolutely necessary to uh, understand the evolution of the boundary layer. So this is the uh, LAFO project, and you can see the um, science goals. Of course, understand the land atmosphere feedback change over the regimes of all compartments in the context of large scale forcing and characterize coupling strength. We would like to set up these systems in different regions. Um, we have already two systems in Europe running, but of course, we would like to have these in different climate zones. Quantify the effect of land use and land cover change on regional weather and climate also in connection with future bioengineering geo efforts. Observations of surface and entrainment fluxes, also in complex terrain. Quantify ET and its separation in ENT. Study the energy balance closure and heterogeneous terrain, which is really crucial you know, for the upscaling of fluxes, for example. Develop advanced parameterizations of surface fluxes and atmospheric bone layer turbulence. Study regional water and energy budgets, verify our system models down to the turbulent scales. Of course, when you have these kind of measurements, which are very accurate, have high resolution, this is the choice you know, for the modelers who operate the models on the turbulence, uh, turbulence permitting scales, because we these systems also resolve turbulence. We can perform impact study towards operation and assimilation of GLAFO data. And last but not least, uh, of course, if we have an observatory which is defined as a continuous uh, measurement, then we can use uh, these observations also for climate monitoring. At our University of Hohenheim in Stuttgart, Germany, we established a prototype of the Land Atmosphere Feedback Observatory. You can see that's quite uh, located in complex terrain, but of course we have to deal with that. No? We cannot only consider all the time with a research project that the land surface is homogeneous, which is not the case. You know, we have to get in the complex terrain and handle the processes which are ongoing. Here you can see a central agriculture site of, uh, of the, our land atmosphere, land atmosphere feedback observatory. It's surrounded by forest patches, urban areas, and this is actually the airport uh, in Stuttgart, very close to our uni university very convenient. So what did we put together? We have a soil moisture and temperature network, which uh, measures temperature, moisture, but also matrix potential and retention profiles. Uh, these are 22 stations over this domain. The data are available since July 2018. And we also prepare to measure drainage flow. Then we have canopy measurements, uh, very important when you deal with crops. You know, so the observe leaf area index, the phenological state, we do canopy profiling, temperature and moisture, four, four heights and five locations, and, and UAV measures actually maps out you know, the canopy height in this region. Then we have, of course, you know, the other covariant stations, those are the typical measurements which are made, and you have actually two of these over different patches. And usually we measure um, they're over maize and wheat, you know, which are the most important crops in Europe. And then we have our active remote sensing systems. So we have a scanning water vapor differential absorption LIDAR, um, um, profiling water vapor and temperature Raman LIDAR, Doppler LIDARs, one vertical steering and one uh, conical scanning. This gives us wind profiles and also turbulence profiles. Then we operate a Doppler cloud radar, a distrometer, and a micro rain radar. Simultaneously, we can make uh, high resolution model runs. So our model system, also based, of course, you know, on Wolf NOAA MP, is operating already. We can run it at any time and go down to a scale of 10 meters. Or, with this domain. This shows uh, the water vapor mixing ratio perturbations during a case um, in 2001, and here the vertical wind velocity fluctuations over the LAFO site. 
With these data, I would like to show you some examples. We can already make some interesting statistics concerning land atmosphere feedback. First of all, of course, you have to get the, the bound layer uh, depth, you know, which is shown here as a diurnal cycle from May to July 2021. We have a fuzzy logic algorithm to determine this. So the typical bound layer depth over this time period in summer is about 1,200 meters or noon time. Of course, as a meteorologic, uh, meteorologist, it would be very embarrassing for me if I could not specify this for our LAFO site. Yeah, and when we have now these mixing height measurements, then uh, we can relate this to the surface fluxes. And this is already a metric. No? When we relate this to the surface flux, and we look at the diurnal evolution of the bond layer depth, no? the slope of this curve gives you some kind of relationship no? between the bond layer and the surface flux, and the slope is a kind of metric. But we have further uh, other lots of data uh, scanned through this rather quick to give you an impression of what you can do with these kind of measurements. You can measure TKE profiles and that's during a cycle which is shown here on the left hand side with the characteristic maximum at about 0.4 um, Z over ZI and then the roll off towards uh, the bound layer top. And we can even also get the momentum flux profiles. And um, particularly important, of course, um, water vapor and temperature measurements. And here I would like to introduce rather quick our ARTO system, the atmospheric grammar temperature and humidity sounder, which is now capable actually typically in the near range to measure water vapor mixing ratio profiles 24 7 with a vertical resolution of 10 seconds and a range resolution of 7.5 meters. And this is, looks really fantastic you know, in the vertical structures. You can derive the strong gradients in the moisture. You, know, your part, you can measure largely through drizzle, partly through lay, uh, rain, go through optical thin clouds. And at the same time, and this is a specialty of the system, we have also the temperature. Uh, you can see, of course, that it should be. You know, there is an inversion layer at this top, you know, which marks you know, the the, the gradient at the top of the bond layer and um, mixing ratio distribution. So this is very useful for the monitoring, verification of models and sensors, even from space, data assimilation, studies of radiative transfer, investigation of water and energy budgets, of course, the topic of my talk, land atmosphere feedback. But also the, the high resolution allows you know, that we can do transport studies and um, develop new parameterization of turbulent transport. It can be interesting for convection initiation, which is currently not the real top uh, focus of our research to study mesoscale circulations. More about these systems you can find in this review. And then you, when you have these kind of measurements, also in uh, the convective bound layer, you, know, you can see here the time height cross section of a measurement, which we actually did at the German Weather Service at the Meteorological Observatory Lindbergh, um, southeast of Berlin. You can do time height cross section of mixing ratio, resolution 10 seconds, vertical 50 meters. You can nicely see the evolution of the bound layer and the turbulent eddies. Then you get the same for the temperature which uh, shows you nicely the inversion layer and also other elevated um, inversion layers, which are, of course, important you know, for the weather, weather evolution. That's the, now in terms of potential temperature. Then we get the temperature variance profiles, which has the characteristic maximum at the top of the bone layer. Same for the mixing ratio variance. But then we combine it with our Doppler LiDAR and get also profiles of sensible heat flux and latent heat flux. And this is, I would say, really a new, exciting application because with this is system, we can measure the entrainment flux in a routine manner, which is so important to characterize land atmosphere feedback. So this is the first project, an overview about GLAFO. Then I would like to introduce a, a project studying um, Land Atmosphere Feedback, which is called LAFI, the Land Atmosphere Feedback Initiative, which is funded by the German Research Foundation, GFG. It's usually this uh, collaborative research units get a number 5639. That's not so important. 
So how, how does a suitable research program to be designed? We start on the local scale at the LAFO side and expand our research to the mesoscale up to the development of shadow convection. So that's the focus of our studies. We need these kind of observations of vertical profiles, which I just showed you in connection with GLAFO. But we also uh, want to measure horizontal variability of variables. And these data must be complemented with high resolution land atmosphere system simulations for advancing process understanding and merging their information contents. Therefore, in within this program, a multitude of experts came together from various disciplines and joined forces. LAFI consists of a coordination project and the following 12 strongly interwoven projects. We have one projects uh, on observation and investigation of the land atmosphere system, ABL processes and fluxes. This is basically a fee campaign. And you can see here the key players coming from various research institutes, DLR, DLR, Oberpfaffenhofen, TU Dresden, our own university, University of Bayreuth, LIST in Luxembourg. Dresden again, and a couple of other experts from our university. So that's our observation project. Then Thomas Jagdhuber from the University of Augsburg and DLR will apply spaceborne remote sensing of vegetation and derive canopy properties. Then uh, Natalie and from the TU Dresden and Angelika from SALF will use real time water stable isotope measurements to petition evapotranspiration. Then we have a project on linking land surface energy and water partitioning to crop and root zone dynamics. It's led by my colleague Tito Streck, and Joachim Engwersen, and uh, Tobias Weber from the University of Kassel. Professor Thomas is one of the experts uh, running fiber optical distributed uh, sensors. And he has a project on to study land surface heterogeneity impacts on near surface transport. And we have here uh, Matthias Mauder from the Technical University in Dresden, who's studying ABL dynamics and structure over heterogeneous surfaces. And here their projects uh, start also to apply models. So he will apply here in this connection the PALM model. Then we apply in Dwarf NOAA MP, GECROS, no, with a crop model to study the impact of dynamic variation, heterogeneity on heat fluxes, and to detect the blending height, which has been postulated that this exists. And then we have here Julia Pongratz from LMU in, in Munich uh, to study scale interactions in land atmosphere feedbacks. We have also a project, modeling project to study um, terrestrial hydrology using isotope signatures. And this is actually another version of WARF. It's called WARF ISO. Um, it has a component to simulate um, the distribution and partitioning of isotopes in the model system. We have also a strong project on uh, deep learning for understanding land atmosphere feedback processes. I'll come back to this later. This is uh, here, I collaborate with Martin Butz, who's one expert in deep learning and foundation models from the University of Tübingen. And we have Stan Szymanski from LIST to study land atmosphere coupling and vegetation behavior. And that, last but not least, Markus Breil from our department to synthesize um, all these results to improve understanding and qualification of land atmosphere feedbacks. So that's a large, large suite no, of projects, but um, I would say very well coordinated. So the last objective is to understand and quantify land atmosphere feedbacks via unique synergistic observations and model simulations from the micro gamma to the meso gamma scale across the ordinal two seasonal time scales. LAFI addresses four research objectives. We would like to move beyond money over cost similarity uh, theory, have lots of ideas about that explain surface flux heterogeneity, partition evapotranspiration, and quantify entrainment. If there's an extreme event ongoing, we will be prepared for this with our model simulations and uh, the observations that will be adapted to the extreme event. Let it be a drought, for example. Then we have our synthesizing projects. And uh, we also established uh, three cross-cutting working groups on deep learning on exploiting sensor synergy for upscaling of land atmosphere system variables, 
and the LAFI multi-model experiment to quantify land atmosphere feedbacks. Our collaboration is visualized by this uh, spider web on a lemon slice. We will enhance the uh, LAFI observatory by uh, uh, special measurements. And in order to show this, we prepared a movie. I hope it, it, it runs. Please let me know whether, whether there's a problem. At all times and any location, the temperature and the moisture over the land surface are determined by land atmosphere feedback. Within the research unit 5639 Land Atmosphere Feedback Initiative of the German Research Foundation, we will expand the instrumentation at the Land Atmosphere Feedback Observatory at the University of Hohenheim to close these observational gaps to characterize land atmosphere feedback in our region by suitable metrics and to advance the understanding of various processes such as evapotranspiration and entrainment. Within LAFO, we will set up and operate two 10 meter towers. Using measurement at two levels, two meter and 10 meters, we will investigate the effect of heterogeneity and relationship between fluxes and driving variables such as moving obocope similarity theory. The new atmospheric Raman temperature and humidity sounder Artus is capable to measure temperature moisture and aerosol size with high temporal and range resolution. Atlas detects turbulent fluctuations in water vapor and temperature during date. Together with Verena Raichan, I uh, coordinate the LAFO, the Land Atmosphere Feedback Observatory. We coordinate the operations of all our instruments here in order to meet our research goals on boundary layer and land atmosphere feedbacks. A key part of our role is to take care of the data management and this includes the refinement and the optimization of the data flow from LAFO in order to maximize research and public data accessibility. The water vapor differential absorption LIDAR of the University of Hohenheim provides absolute humidity profiles with worldwide unique resolution of the order of 10 meters and 1 to 10 seconds, and simultaneously also with very high accuracy. Within LAFI, we will expand the instrumentation at the Land Atmosphere Feedback Observatory by further essential instrumentation, such as fiber optical distributed sensors and isotope sensors. For our project, we will establish an innovative in situ measurement setup for monitoring water stable isotope rate composition in real time at the LAFO site. This enables us to quantify water sources and contributions to net fluxes like transpiration and evaporation. Naturally occurring isotopic differences between evaporated soil water and plant transpired water form the basis for our isotope evapotranspiration petitioning approach. For investigating surface fluxes and turbulent transport and heterogeneous terrain, it is essential to measure air temperature and flow in at least two dimensions. We accomplish this through operating networks of fiber optic distributed sensors alongside the two LAFO towers. These observations create synergies with the spatial LiDAR scans. In addition, we collect fundamental data on the canopy and soil using this innovative sensing technique. The enhancement of LAFO by the LAFI research unit will make it a thorough and comprehensive measurement system that will help us better observe land atmosphere feedbacks, where such a pioneering system is unique worldwide. LAFA will then help us better represent such feedbacks in our weather and climate models. This figure presents the scales of critical processes in the land atmosphere system, in terms of time and space, and their coverage by the observations within the projects um, P1 to P4 within our, and P11 within our research program. And these uh, observations must be complemented by simulations of land atmosphere system models. Therefore, the second research component is the LAFI multi model experiment that consists of six unique model systems four coupled models and two offline models. We have here the PAR model, which resolves turbulent transport in heterogeneous terrain with very high spatial resolution. Then, oh, sorry, 
Okay. Then the Worf NOAA MPG cross uh, model system. So we are, of course, also interested in new developments of Worf NOAA MP crop. This operates with different resolutions simultaneously and uses a sophisticated representation of crop dynamics. Then we apply the um, icon Jottes Bach model system of the Max Planck Institute in Germany and the German Weather Service DWD. This enables also to study mesoscale effects of micro scale surface heterogeneities and also provides carbon fluxes. And as I mentioned already, we have a version of Worf NOAA MP Hydro ISO, which uh, provides a sophisticated representation of hydrology and links to the isotope measurements of P3. Two offline models are run uh, to, uh, for process studies. The NOAA MP GECROS improves the representation of ENT of crops and the soil water regime. And we have also a vegetation optimality model, WOM, now, which from PL, which realizes detailed studies of stomata resistance models. So the models are the corporate models, uh, land atmosphere system models are fundamental to understand the effects of heterogeneity on local to regional feedbacks. They provide also, well, because we have many models running, uncertainty estimates for metrics. Whereas the offline models are fundamental to uh, uh, advance the representation of water transport in the soil plant system. Research component three is deep learning. Due to recent advances in the met methodology and big data processing, deep learning has developed a huge potential for land atmosphere system studies. We apply the deep learning on four different levels. On the first level, we will examine similarities in remote sensing data via convolu convolutional networks that can be used for downscaling satellites data towards predicting land surface temperatures with high resolution. On the second level, we will study flux similarities for developing uh, alternatives to MOST, Moonin Orokov similarity theory using machine learning. Um, importance weighting techniques will tell us you know, what are the most important driving variables, and then we can relate these to the fluxes. This is a basic to uh, develop alternatives to MOST. On the third level, we will augment the deep learning um, architecture with physics-informed regularization to refine our MOST studies with um, the boundary conditions like energy conservation. Last but not least, we will study the multi-dimensional phase space of land atmosphere system, which is of course very complex with foundation models, which are able to find structures in the multi-dimensional phase space. That we uh, use, will use this to improve our understanding of the interaction of the various variables. Here's an example of our recent MOS study, which with, with, uh, was also shown by Sue Ellen Haupt with other data, and which shows really the potential of um, machine learning. You can see here an observed sensible heat flux and the retrieved sensible heat flux using two machine learning techniques, extreme gradient boosting and the multi-layer perceptron in comparison with the bulk Richards number approach in green you know, and to uh, the monin Obokov theory in blue. And you can see already that the must rolls off here significantly from the observations. This looks even worse when you look at the latent heat flux. This is really, I could not believe my eyes actually when I saw that how far most is away from the observations, and this holds also for the bulk Richards number approach, whereas the machine learning uh, results uh, agree very well with the observations. And we can also do an absorb uh, importance weighting. Uh, we find that the most important driving variables for the latent heat flux are basically is radiation and not the water vapor gradient, which is totally in disagreement you know, with monin uberkov theory. So there's a lot of potential here to improve um, the models and uh, this kind of theories. Let me show an example um, how we uh, study now land atmosphere feedback and how we address our research objectives. You know, this is an example for the objective two explaining surface flux heterogeneity. This is of course key research you know, on the scaling and partitioning of surface fluxes and also contributes to the understanding of the energy balance closure, which is so crucial over agricultural landscapes. 
For this purpose, we will um, collect our spatial temporal data set and we run our multi-model experiment where we observe then the land atmosphere system state and the variables and we do the same thing with the models. And then we can combine this knowledge you know, spatially, temporally, so we will apply post-processing, decomposition and compute statistics in order to find how the scales and the spectra are modified you know, by the land surface heterogeneity. And this actually can be used you know, to get uh, improved models of surface fluxes considering lacks in the energy balance closure. So we can synthesize the results to analyze shortcomings of measured and simulated fluxes, propose alternative scaling of fluxes, depending on flow conditions and surrounding micro and mesoscale circulations. And then we can evaluate a hypothesis, which is actually related to a certain scale decomposition. We can identify a norm for comparing MME output and observations and incorporate co-spectral modifications of the fluxes and dispersive fluxes to correct surface fluxes and recompute EBC. Right. So this is an overview of our research program we just uh, established. Now I would like to show you another example of um, the importance of land atmosphere feedback and um, you can apply, for instance, for uh, studying cloud enhancement and precipitation enhancement in desert regions. This was a project and an idea we um, proposed and investigated within the United Arab Emirates uh, Rain Enhancement Program, where, where I was one of the awardees. So the idea is to use this understanding for regional climate engineering and to combat climate change impacts to combat water scarcity. Now, and the idea is to put darker surfaces in the desert. Now, the desert is actually quite bright, has an albedo typically of 30%. So if you put in here this kind of dark surface, this can be, of course, also a photovoltaic uh, plant uh, establishment or can be vegetation. No? So there are, of course, different options. But it is clear when you put this uh, surface in the desert that this dark surface absorbs more energy. And the idea is to transform this energy to enhance vertical transport you know, and change the dynamics at the location of the site to overcome the subsidence and produce clouds in precipitation. Here you can see some uh, related publications. So how can we understand this? Now we put the surface in the desert. This is actually close to Abu Dhabi on the Arabian Peninsula. We have a darkening and this needs to higher solar absorption. And we use the plant types that do not transpire during daytime. Now this can be jojoba, for example, or we use an artificial surface. And this leads to an increase of the surface temperature. This is clear. Yeah. And then we produce a local heat low and in combina combination with the modification of the surface friction, conversion zones are formed. Yeah? And this leads to vertical, stronger vertical transport. And we see that clearly in the model. Now, this is a control run with a sea breeze in this area. And over the surface, there's an increase of temperature, but also the development of conversion zones and bending of the flow. So we transport, change the dynamics, and eventually, if the large-scale upper-level instabilities are favorable, convection can be initiated and clouds can form, leading to rain. And this uh, makes a lot of sense. You know, this is physically understood. And when you now run a movie with our Wolf Noah MP run, you, know, you can see the enhancement of vertical transport over the surface, cloud development in gray, you know, and the formation of rain close to the surface, but not only over the surfaces, of course, also uh, horizontal transport. And based on these results and our model studies, we developed a new index for predicting the impact of a surface like that. We do, can do this actually globally, which is shown in this uh, paper. So we can uh, identify and uh, characterize the probability of rainfall impact we can optimize locations, see how variable this is uh, over the seasons. And so this impact index 
is based on stability, dynamics, and moisture. And we find um, that typically, um, when you now take summer time, that there are about you know, 10 days or so in summer time where the convection initiation can be in initiated. So that's uh, quite promising. So we did some about, yes. ten, about 10 minutes. OK, yeah, Thanks. this fits very well. Thank you. We can now uh, study you know, the, these models with, and uh, use different scales, which we did in a recent paper you know, to find also the scale dependence. So on the left hand side, there's a case from the 27th of July 2015. There's a control you know, with the development of a sea breeze. On the right hand side, you, know, you can see the change or increase of conversions clearly you know, on, in the impact model. Where we have here the two surfaces, increase of convergence, particularly yeah, also here in this region, forming precipitation. Then we uh, compiled all our results over the different scales. We used two days and find that actually um, there's a significant amount of rainfall when the um, size of this uh, domain exceeds 10 kilometers. You know? So this is a spurious rain, which is anyway in the model. And then we have the increase of the rain amount yeah, by about um, yeah, three to five um, liters per day per capita to so feed people per year, which are then can be supported or here in an absolute quantity shown again in mil millimeter million cubic meters. And here you can see again the scale dependence, not 10 kilometers, 20, 30, 40, 50. And these are the different days. So there's clearly an um, enhancement of rain, a production of rain. And this serves when you reach, uh, for instance, 2.5 million cubic meters can serve 15,000 people per year by this production of rain. So for instance, this can be realized when you put go in the desert and you start with a small patch. This can be then upscaled during time. We can, of course, accompany this with measurements. And uh, this would be a fantastic project to be realized in a desert region. I would like to point out that this is not only uh, suitable for the Arabian Peninsula. This is actually not the best region. The most promising region is southeastern California and the Sonora, as well as the Namib Desert. So for the cloud and preservation reactor, you can use, of course, different kinds of uh, darkening devices, dark thermal foil, for example. You know, that there are robust materials available. You can make measurements to get confidence no, in our understanding of the feedback processes. And I can tell you that this is actually patented, you know, this, this way to produce rain in a desert region. So I have a pattern on this. And um, all rainfall, which is not falling over this domain where you can collect the water, that's the idea here. It's falling outside the domain. It's also interesting and important because it can lead to groundwater recharge. So later additions can be, of course, that you replace these darkening areas just by a PV, a PV system. So it's a win-win situation, actually, when you combine this with PV. And also with the, maybe with the plantation, you know, which can be just irrigated by the rain amount, which is produced by this area. So that's our idea um, to apply um, our understanding of land atmosphere feedback in different regions yeah, for the benefit of humans. In summary, what are the highlights of these research initiatives? First of all, it is important to design and operate an ultra high resolution model system, if possible, an ensemble. And these can be applied not only for feedback studies, but also for impact studies like the cloud and precipitation reactor I showed you today. This must be complemented by a sensor synergy as operated at a LAFO site and hopefully in the future a different GLAFOs. As I said, there are two GLAFOs already in Europe. That's um, the 
Ruisdal Observatory in Kabau, the Netherlands, and the DWD Mall in Germany. And tomorrow, actually, I will take off to Brazil for a field trip, meet colleagues in Brazil in order to establish a glafo over the rainforest. The icing on the cake are different uh, methods to apply deep learning, as I showed you today. But the most important thing is, of course, our brain, you know, the interdisciplinary teams of experts. Like a magnifying glass, these projects will bring clarity to the blurred picture of land atmosphere feedback processes, thereby closing major gaps in our knowledge of the Earth system. We envision the following implications to Earth system science knowledge about land drivers and land atmosphere system behavior will foster understanding of regional climate change improved process understanding and representation in models will contribute to reliable seamless forecasts accurate e and t partitioning and retracing of water flows will improve crop growth and yield assessment and the quantification of feedbacks will enhance our understanding of the evolution and amplification of heat waves and droughts in a future phase, we plan to develop and implement parameterizations over heterogeneous terrain, establish, uh, enhance our measurements uh, out of our forest site, and include the coupling of carbon and water cycles. I thank also our research team here for the fantastic and enthusiastic collaboration, and also for your attention. Thank you very much. Thank you, Volker. Um, very fascinating, very interesting. And um, of course, a topic that I'm as well very interested in. So um, I'm sorry, I should have said to everybody um, throughout, you can place uh, any questions in the chat. Um, I don't see any yet. Um, but let's see if I can, um, people can raise their hands. Um, and I can call on you. Okay, Kirsten. Oh, hi, Kirsten. Yes. Hi, nice to see you guys. Great talk, Volker. Great that you're around. <laughs> yeah, I, I know I'm not there at NCARB, but I'm, I am I got on a mailing list that, 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 so I was lucky to see that, see your talk. But um, I, I feel like your, your project um, is, it covers the entire spectrum of the the glass panel. I mean, it's amazing the different components that you have. It's really it's quite a remarkable um, ensemble you've put together. It's 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 really um, phenomenal. Thank you. So, yeah, I'm excited to see how that how that moves forward. I'm just out of curiosity. I'm uh, on the last point you talked about the rain enhancement one. Mm -hmm. I, I that the the implications of the scale. The, the the necessary scale to kick it in. What was that threshold? Because um, yeah, based on these studies over the United Arab Emirates, it seems so that you really see a significant rain enhancement or starting at the scale of ten kilometers. Ten kilometers, because that mm -hmm. obviously then has implications for uh, b willingness to invest in oh, you know yeah. right partners' willingness to invest in such a big project. But it also, mm -hmm. I mean. It, it the, the the implications of um you know if someone starts small they might get a very different result than if you if you start at an at you know above that necessary threshold and i just wonder how receptive your funders were to hearing that because were they interested in it as a, you said it was part of a rain enhancement project right i mean that's a good question kirsten actually they were not very interested <laughs> That I have no idea. I have actually no idea why, because this is, I think, for the uh, initiation of warm rain, the only reasonable way to produce rain in the desert region. Maybe you know that the UAE has a cloud seeding program, but this is not effective. It cannot be effective. Because are they, are they the cloud, just doing it to try to, you know, look like they're doing something, right? <laughs> I think it's uh, it's research, and you can of yeah. course study then uh, the statistics now of yeah. uh, whether there's an impact. You need a long data set, so that for that purpose, it's very valuable. 
But you know, the, the, the point is the following. We discuss it quite often. And um, when you have uh, a desert situation, the reason that this is a desert is obviously a suppression of rain. Yeah. And this is due to the large scale subsidence, particularly over the Arabian Peninsula. When you seed a cloud, you, know, you do not change your thermodynamics. No, if it's a shadow cloud, it remains a shadow cloud. And so what, what you have to do is to overcome you know, the subsidence. You know, that, and this is our idea. And if we change not the thermodynamics, we change the dynamics in yeah. this. You know, so we, the energy, basically, of this uh, patch is huge. You know, of course, a huge energy in, intake in addition to the environment is partly transformed in a um, in a coherent flow, in a coherent updraft, so it forms conversion zones, and these are the conversion zones which overcome eventually you know, the subsidence and can lead to deep convection, which is of course essential and it produces a significant amount amount of rain. When I say ten kilometers, I would like to add this. Uh, this is a result for the UAE or the Arabian Peninsula. Oman is actually similar, but. Over other regions, we don't know this very well, so it's really worthwhile to do more research on this and to make these kind of simulations also for, for over the Sonora, which yeah, looks yeah. very. And then I can imagine that it, that's uh, over the Sonora or Namibia, the scale can be smaller. You know, it can be smaller, maybe five kilometers or something like that to see the same effect. But it depends, yeah. of course, on the region where you apply this. Yeah, really interesting, really interesting, just from a scientific perspective, but also from an uptake of the science, that perspective. Yeah. 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 Thank you so much, Volker. I'm excited to yeah. see how it all progresses. Thank you, Kirsten. Um, I'll add that I'm trying to work with uh, um, Lu Lin Zhu and, um, and Volker on possibly some kind of research effort proposal. Um, and I'll want to talk to you further uh sarah because you're leading the re you're you're leading the weather modification uh here uh group uh here at, at um Rao. so tammy go ahead hi volker great talk trying to start my end, but it's not starting it's not uh, tammy this is yeah. Yeah. Tammy. <laughs> tammy's here we're both together <laughs> <laughs> really interesting talk, and it definitely provoked Thanks. my interest in the, the last part about the um, rainfall enhancement. At the same time, you're warming the surface temperatures, which could potentially um, exacerbate warming. Um, but there's feedbacks, right? So you're generating clouds, which could reflect solar radiation and, and mm -hmm. maybe do some cooling. But if it's high clouds, that would be a warming effect. So there's a lot of complicated competing mm -hmm. feedbacks there. I'm wondering if you've thought about the uh, sort of the warming feedback potential of this approach. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a very good question. Um, I mean, if you run a model and we study then the feedback that clouds and precipitation are developing, of course, these kind of feedbacks changing of the radiation or so are included no, in the model run, not the shattering of the radiation by the clouds or so. But on other days where you, there is no uh, deep convection developing, then, uh, of course, we would still have a warming mm -hmm. over the, the, the uh, this surface. And we find, actually, this is so two to three degrees uh, during daytime. But actually, during nighttime, there's a cooling uh, because there's higher efficiency emiss emissivity of the surface mm. during nighttime. So it, when you look at really at the average, there's a cooling. In average, there's a cooling over the surface, over the diurnal cycle. Yeah, of course, for the daytime, nobody would probably walk around in this area. But actually, the most fascinating thing is to use not just an arbitrary dark surface, but a photovoltaic plant. Yeah, because in, the, in this case, the photovoltaic plant can operate all the time. And when the, the, the plant is operating, the energy input from the sun is, of course, transfer, uh, transferred in, in a current, yeah, in a production of a current. So the heating during this time is not that large, no, as you would not operate the PV. And with our um, model system, with our uh, index or introduced, you can actually tell then the PV operators, tomorrow is the day where we expect the enhancement of rain. Then they turn off the PV, that you have the full energy input, and you produce 
with this device, no, with this planned rain and cloud, yeah, clouds and rain, if possible. No? And the next day you turn it on again. So that's a fantastic win-win situation. Yeah. Um, there are actually uh, large EV plants currently built over the UA UAE. And then you can see even, even see that already on from space and they reach these scales of 10 kilometers. They will reach these scales. So that's that's um, totally fascinating to try this then out. No? Yeah, I agree. Thanks, Volker. Mm -hmm. um, Meg, I saw you came up next, I think. And then uh, let's see. Then we have uh, Ji Zhang next. Go, go ahead, Meg. Awesome. Thanks, Volker. That was a really nice talk. I think that the last part is obviously incredibly interesting. This seems like a magical win-win situation of putting a dark surface in the desert, getting rainfall. I'm curious, are there any downstream impacts of that? So if the mm -hmm. rain falls in the desert, where is it not falling? And is there kind of a consistent pattern that you're you're seeing? That's a good point. Um, we find that the most uh, rain is actually fall falling directly over the this, this surface. But some uh, of the um, yeah, um, clouds and rain systems developing also transported downstream. I think I showed it on one of the slides. Is it still running, the slide sharing? I think so, no? You can see yeah. it here, actually. No? That the most of, we found that the most of the rain is falling over the surface, and then here you can combine it with the rain water collector. It is indicated by these thin lines. I forgot to mention this. And um, partly the rain is then also falling outside, but it's also beneficial actually for the people there because it leads to groundwater recharge no, and reduction of salination, you know, salinity of the soil. But you wouldn't expect anything, you know, 50 kilometers or 100 kilometers downstream per se? I did not okay. see much effect. It was the downstream effect was on a similar scale, like the size of this patch. But yeah. there's, there's, of course, downstream effect. It's there, definitely, but not, you know, there's probably no teleconnection, not at these sizes no, of the, yeah. this, these plants. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Volker. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you very much, Meg. Uh, we'll go to Zhi Zhang, go ahead. Hi, uh, thank you very much for this very nice presentation. Uh, I'm Zhe, uh, I'm a postdoc here at NCAR working on NOAA MP and the crop model. So mm -hmm. uh, I'm interested in the crop model part. And then, uh, so you, you're showing one plot that's uh, the machine learning uh, algorithm. Uh, two of the machine learning algorithms outperform uh, the most method and then bulk Richardson methods. I'm, I'm just wondering, does it, is it all a site part where you have this very uh, fine detailed uh, measurement and then you train it over that and how much does that translate to a upper scale, uh, mm -hmm. upscale larger region. And then my second question is related to the uh, wolf isotope model. So does how long that so uh, how long does this isotope reside in the atmosphere or does it go through any like say phase changes and through uh, convections and all kind of uh, uh, microphysics and boundary layer process. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you very much for the questions. Um, when you look at these results, um, they, they, are, they are achieved actually uh, at the SGP site in, in, in Oklahoma. So we set up four tower, uh, sorry, three towers there. And um, we studied in great detail whether heterogeneity of the environment could contribute to these deviations, but using all kinds of scaling studies and heterogeneity studies, nothing confirmed that this can be due to some non-representative effects. You know? So the powers were really within a homogeneous footprint you know, of the vegetation. You know? So it was partly a natural vegetation mix and uh, soybeans. In, in different states and all the data you could actually put together for these results so i think this is uh, quite representative also for other sites and yesterday was actually a talk by sue ellen haupt who has two publications about interestingly pretty much it's similar time using data from Kabau and other sites and this is totally consistent you know, the deviation 
you find here for the sensible heat flux and for the latent, the disaster for the latent heat flux, you find it also at our sites, most really say, <laughs> most really say this. And uh, so I think this can be generalized. Oh, yeah, your other question concerning the ISO model system, here I must confess that I really don't know all the details. You, know, you have the partitioning of the evaporation and transpiration. You measure it in two different water vapor isotopes, you know, with O18 and O16. Now this partitioning of this, uh, um, the, um, the concentration you know, of these isotopes need to be measured in the atmosphere. Maybe I can show this. I think I have it here somewhere. Yeah. So this was what Natalie and Angelica are doing. So they measure you know, the isotope ratios actually in the atmosphere, in the crop range, in the soil, and they also get some soil probes. And when they put all this stuff together, which I did not understand fully so far, it's really tricky stuff to have a model on this. When you make all these measurements all together, then at the end, you can get root water uptake and uh, the separation of evaporation and transpiration. And these isotope ratios are also simulated in the Wolf Hydro ISO version. So there's actually a tracer incorporated which simulates the isotope ratio and how the plants will modify this ratio due to the transpiration. Now this, of course, has then the opportunity to expand you know, these kind of isotope ratio measurements over a large domain. And if the measurements are well calibrated, which is, of course, a big research effort, so we, we, we keep us really busy, um, then there's a potential you know, that you can make um, yeah, can make these simulations of these isotope ratios and sim separate based on these isotope, isotope ratios also uh, the separation of evaporation transpiration over a large domain. Does that answer the question? Yeah, yes, yes, thank you very much. So uh, I'm you, also, you can also contact Harald Kunstmann and Joel Arnoux, who are the expert on this, or I can ask them, uh, get more infos about this. Yes, thank you very much. Well, we're past the top of the hour, so um, I'd like to thank uh, Volker once more, give you my uh, little virtual clap here. Um, thank you very much. Um, this, is, uh, this is a fascinating topic and really important for our models. Um, thank you for your work in this area. Thank you for then um, connecting and being part then of GWEX and the glass panel. Uh, and also our, our RAL advisory panel. So there's a lot of uh, interactions and, uh, and and connections. So it's a great pleasure. Yeah, thank you very much, and thanks everyone for joining uh, joining us. And Volker, I'll connect with you at what time is it? At four thirty for our next oh, meeting. Yes, mm -hmm. with Sen Lin. Um, anyway, um, thank you very much, everyone. Thank you. Oh, oh, let's see. One hand went Bye. up real quickly. Um, John Ru Tian just put his hand up. Okay. Hmm. There was uh, there was a question, Volker. Um, okay, this I guess we can uh, we can stop recording this now. I I don't know if Jenny will. So, um, right. For any further questions, uh, we can collect them maybe and. Yeah, and and then I'll make sure everyone has a has answer a them per email or so ability to connect with you. Are was your slide deck going to be available then? Yeah, sorry, was your slide deck going to be available then? Yeah, sure. Okay. 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 Slides. I can also distribute a movie. Of course, I have also to show send around the movie because you're part of it, Mike. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Okay. I uh, <laughs> I remember recording that when I was there last summer. So, um, yeah. absolutely. And once again, congratulations on getting this uh, this German Science Foundation um, yeah, thanks. project funded. 
has these many components and and uh, important land atmosphere interaction. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh. Hi, Don. Hey, How Don. are you? Don Lencho is also around. Yeah. But maybe he's already offline. Hmm. Okay. Okay, Mike, then uh, well, we, do, we have a link, no? We have the link for the next meeting at 4.30, right? Yes. Um, um, mm -hmm. uh, Sen Lin sent it out. So, um, you know, very much along the lines of the things that you've been working on and mm -hmm. making those nice connections. I, I guess this, when you're done, I'll just click on the... Okay, I'll just stop here and... Stop. Yo. Okay. Okay. See you okay. soon. Okay. Oh, there, there you go. Don said hi. <laughs> oh, <laughs> there he you. is. Hey, Don. Hey. Um, Don, thanks. how did you hear about the talk? Thanks, I, I... thanks for joining. <laughs> oh, it was a pleasure. Enjoyed it. Yeah. Glad I... to see you're making those big strides. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I, how I... are you? I'm I'm at home. Okay. How are you doing? I'm I'm doing fine. I still come in uh, most days, most weekdays. But uh, mm -hmm. but not uh, not so productively anymore. <laughs> but I enjoy it. Oh yeah, you have already top one thousand papers published. Done. Yeah, so. it brings brings <laughs> back a lot of uh, bring back a lot of fond memories. Yeah, I, I agree. I will be in Boulder actually from August twenty seventh to September twenty. Oh, if, well, if you're around, it would be uh, great to meet. I hope so. I hope I'll still be around. <laughs> yeah, you, you, often, you often find Don at lunch with uh, Ned and Peter uh, Sullivan, Ned Patton, and um, I think Sean is another one. Um, starting about one o'clock is when they have lunch, so I'll run into them occasionally when I go over for lunch. So, yeah. Okay. So anyway, uh, well, thanks for joining. Really nice, to, really nice to see you, and look forward to seeing you this summer. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And actually, I have a. I should send you a paper that which was just got published. Let me make a note about our measurement of the molecular destruction of variants. Yeah. This is. A, there was a lot of fun to put this paper together about mm -hmm. a variable we can measure now with our lidar synergy, but nobody is interested in it. Oh, <laughs> I'm interested. I'm interested. <laughs> I can send it to you. Maybe you have some ideas. Sure. You probably have some look. ideas about the applications. Yeah. <laughs> okay. 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 All the best. All the best to you. Thanks. Thanks for. Bye. Thanks so much for joining, Don. So. Sure. Right. Yeah. Bye. Absolutely. Bye. Goodbye. Okay. All the best. Thank you.